my name's again Lenteng Valentine Jodzuven. I hail from the continent of Cameroon, particularly or precisely from Northwest region. So, I don't know if you are afraid of establishing business. That is why all these Indians and they are taking over African shop. And funny enough, it's African people that supplied them. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people who lose their jobs or who whose opportunities we are not giving to them because one of them was there and he talked bad about them. So, what is the root cause of this? And he's an African. He's an African. I never get to make Which him. nationality? <laughs> Tell me. It's a Ninja. Ninja? <laughs> yeah. Be very plain. Mm. Do you think Nigeria is the problem of Africans in UAE? I want you to tell me. Huh? I want you to name three African countries that believe or thinks that they are not African. Three African countries that, that believe or think or feel like that they are not part of Africans. Each time African man is doing well, each time an African man is doing well, mm. he becomes so proud that he thinks that other Africans are trash. Yeah, nothing. It's, it's, Th that's it's, true. We have pride. African has pride and some negative pride. Because there are so many prides we have out there. When Chris talk about this license thing, a lot of people have been traumatized with this license. Brother, license is very easy. Again, again. This is AfriFarm is way open. Walk in through the door if you need license for anything. I have an agent that will walk you through it and you get your license for anything. Hey, yo, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Chris Amilo and I want to welcome you guys to my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. Alright? So this time around, I am at uh, Afri AfriFarm. AfriFarm and... Uh, here they sell African food, and this is the CEO and the founder of AfriFarm. Now, we are here in the journey of changing the narrative of Africans in the United Arab Emirates. So, guys, I want you to cool down and listen to this. You have a lot to learn. Our boss here is going to teach us a lot of things, so... Put your ear down. If you really want to start something, if you want to survive in the midst of all these things that Africans are passing in this country. So kindly listen to us and have an idea on how to be a, an expert, how to be a career builder. You know, for the first day they work, nobody say you be you get a career. There is a difference between career and job. Mm. I understand. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Valentine Josephen. From where? Cameroon. Precisely. From Cameroon. From Cameroon, yeah. To a Cameroonian? I'll be Oh, oui, oui. <laughs> Jesu Cameroon. No, no, no. Jesu from Burkina Faso. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. your name is. Uh, Lenteng Valentine Josephine, those are my names. Uh, and like we said earlier, from Cameroon, precisely from Northwest region. And so, to the world, man. All right. So, and you are the CEO of AfriFarm. AfriFarm. How old is AfriFarm? AfriFarm is almost a year now. Uh, a year? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I want you to tell me. Uh, what is your first experience in UAE? How 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 long have you stayed in UAE? Mm -hmm. And also tell us your first experience while coming to UAE. But first of all, tell us uh, how long have you been in UAE? How long? Mm, not being precise with numbers, but somewhere around ten years and above. Yeah. Ten years. That's correct. Ten years. That's. <laughs> All right. um, uh, <laughs> yeah. people don't did uh, uh man people don't do this country oh, yeah. there are some people you have to see you get to respect them they are not your mates <laughs> understand so uh what was your first experience when you first arrived in uae mm. uh, right disappointed at first sight 
uh, surprise as first sight and you know disappointment and surprise this this is horrible it's something i uh, uh, was not really pleasant that was not something i was expecting for or to see so what made you to be disappointed i want you to hear that name at the, at the point what what happened as in you know me i can say when i was coming to uae uh, my agent told me that i supposed to come with a working visa blah 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 mm -hmm. i went came to the airport and mm -hmm. nobody came to pick me i have to struggle <laughs> my way yeah. out in my pocket was hundred around yeah. <laughs> so i want you to tell me what happened exactly like what you just mentioned yes um no one was there to pick me up from the airport and uh, yeah after the airport trauma the next was accommodation you know and that is why I look at what is going on now comparing to what is now and what was about 10 years ago. There, there were no big spaces. There were floor spaces. So um, and I was told that I would be given a room or I have my own house because I sent the money for that. I paid for renters in the house. And, but when they took me to where I would be staying, I saw I saw people lying on the floor. <laughs> okay. I would just sit here for a while and then... That particular thing can torment. <laughs> You'll be tormented for one month. Ah, you know, so when I step into the when I step into the house, yes, it was one one room. I saw people lying on the floor. All right. Anyway, this is no way I'm going. So I was not really bothered with that. Just for that to become my reality. So yeah. All right. So I want you to tell me your first job. Your first job. The first job that you did in UAE. Basin Otto is a name I, I can never ever forget, you know. Um, there is a motor paper shop in Naive, Naive, behind Dera Park Hotel. There is a, there is, there is an auto paper shop, Basin Otto. They took me the first time on um, commission basis. So, and I have this, these pictures of the shop. Every evening, I will go out in the street, like in Naive Road, I would tour the entire Naive. I would visit hotels, hunt Africans that are coming to UAE to buy spare part, motor spare part. So um, convince them to come to the shop and if they purchase something, then I will get a commission for that. They never give me um, visas. It says, let's see what you do if you, if you, if you produce some, uh, some results and positive results, we might have, uh, we might employ you and give you a visa. But the journey never easy, man. <laughs> you know. So, uh, after then, did you get another job? Or yes, yeah. After then, um, I came in with one month visa, renewable, and the entire one month I couldn't find a job. It was the second month that I went to Basin Auto, we extended with extension. So you are in overstay. Not really overstay. I would have been in overstay if that extension finished. So it was before. It's one month, and after that one month, you have visa change like what we do in visa change now, yeah. which is together will be two months. Yeah. So my initial one month got finished, and you extended it. We extended it. Then this is when I um I went to Basin Auto. All right. So, uh. Now you are finally have your own establishment. You have your own shop. I want you to tell me what is your experience. How what motivated you to be able to get a, a shop on your own? A lot of things, you know. Uh, and I noticed during COVID that only uh, pharmacies, only food stores uh, were allowed to operate in certain times that were not allowed. So. This is one of the things I said, okay, then you need to either you sell medicine or you sell food. And, and like the ignite or like the, like what actually made me to say, okay, food. We Africans, we eat African, but you know, saying we don't eat this right tire now, this man. We don't, we don't eat the parata. So one Saturday, I'm driving from work and I wanted to eat catfish. Catfish, Nigeria, African catfish. Catfish. I won't eat catfish. I call some people around. The people I know that went home. Did you bring something from home? Do you have something you can? I said, mm, no, I exhausted my stock and this, this, this. But one guy, Emmanuel, <laughs> he says, go to this bakala 
and you will find catfish. And it's not African. No. I said, but bro, I mean catfish like mudfish, no, smoke fish. He said, yes, go to this bakala. I said, no, it's not go to this bakala. I said, bro. I went to this bakala and my jaw went like I did not only see catfish. And funny <laughs> enough, uh, Africans, I don't know if we are afraid of establishing business. That is why all these Indians and they are taking over African shop. And funny enough, it's African people that supplied them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? So you don't have the ability to open a shop, but you want to supply for shop. This some person sell that for you. See, when I went there, I said, all right, good. I saw catfish. I saw a lot of food, African food stuff. That was where... I don't know. It changed the the it the entire thing changed my appetite, and that is when I started thinking like, wow, okay, okay, okay. So that from there, Afrifarm was like that's the that's when I started thinking of Afrifarm. All right, hey, listen, gentlemen, if you don't forget, my name is Chris Emilio and I'm right here at Afri Farm Foodstuff, right, right here in Abu Dhabi, Navigate. Mm -hmm. Navigate, close to Navigate. Close to Navigate. Uh, Besides Cedar Building. Besides Cedar Building. Tourist, Club. Tourist, Tourist Club, yeah. Yeah. Club, yeah. So if you're an African and you want to get anything food stuff, anything at all that has to do with African food, Come and patronize your brother. Mm. Do you understand? No carry, don't carry your money and go and give to Bangladesh, India. Come and give your brother the money. So uh, now we are going deeper. All right. <laughs> so, what do you think is the basic problem of Africans in UAE? Like, what is the main problem that Africans are, are having in UAE? What is the basic, what is the cause? What is the problem? What is the basic? Be mm -hmm. very open and very plain. No go and do <laughs> diplomatic. Okay, fine, be very fine. open and very plain. If they drag you, may they drag you. <laughs> Maybe today they drag me. So I want you to tell me, what is the basic problem of African UAE? On your own opinion. Yeah. There is a lot, you know, and uh, uh, I can't really pinpoint on... On a particular cause of, or what what are the issues Africans are facing here? At the top, you will, you might say is um, self limit. You know, like like we limit ourselves, like self esteem, poor self esteem. That is one. We don't believe that we can actually that, yeah, do something. That we can that we can do it. All right, and at the same time, we also do not believe in who we are in what we have. Right, you have this self belittleness. Like I am an African, so you you limit. We limit ourselves to a lot of opportunities out here. Like I come from Africa, I come from this background, I come from a poor this, and that brings you and that brings us back a lot. All right, we Africans we have the ability to to do just anything. We can be experts. We can build we, careers. Right. We are experts in lots of industries and in, in sectors that you cannot even believe that are Africans. But we do not, a lot do not believe in ourselves. So, and if you see, um, like on TikTok, in one of, my, one of the videos on TikTok, you can see an African saying, I do not believe that there are Africans earning one more than 5,000 dirhams salary in the UAE. So when you hear a mind, when you hear someone saying this, you think of what is going, what is running through this guy's mind. If you don't believe that an African can earn 5,000 dirhams in UAE, then you have a problem. So this is one of our problems, the mindset, I would say. All right. Uh, somebody told me that, you know, I was having a discussion with somebody mm. and he said that, uh, and I come up with this kind of question and he told me that Africans don't support each other all right mm. they say that is part of the problem mm -hmm. it's not the main problem but it's part of the problem mm. then he started telling me a lot of stories you know about africans how africans discriminate africans in co-workers you, know, yeah. you work in a company 
maybe you are Cameroon, you are Nigerian. Mm. This one is doing, he's a better mm. African. He want to play <laughs> the good person in the front of the Arba. Of the balls, yeah. uh, stand. And the other guy want to play the good person. And the other to play that good person, he ought to run down the other person. Do you so mm. do you think, have you ever experienced such situation when while you working in the company? Yes, I have. Um, see, after after Basin Otto, I did um, a test. I did a test in auto in auto garage in Target in Alawil, Dubai. During this time, there was a Cameroonian who was um, there was a Cameroonian who had been working in that company before. All right, he came up to me and actually asked me, have you done this? Do you do this back home? Uh, is this something you do? Which is something I had good idea or experience in it. But he went and had some words with the management and my test did not come out correct. So, yeah. And even here, I have heard a lot of people who lose their jobs or who whose opportunities we are not giving to them because one of them was there and he talked bad about them. So, what is the root cause of this? Is it lack of solidarity? Is it lack of unity? Is it lack of love for each other and support? Is all of them. All right. So now, heading to my other question. Now, uh, since you have been in UAE for a very long time, and quite unfortunate that Africa has been facing a lot of problem in this country right. now we have talked about the issue mm -hmm. what caused the problem mm -hmm. now what about the solution what can we do for africans to come up because to be sincere with you we are bad it's not that we are bad but our image is bad correct all right mm. so that is why many nationalities are stepping on on, on africans, africans. Mm in UAE, mm -hmm. if you're working, mm -hmm. and probably an Indian is a supervisor that will use you like a, a mm -hmm. donkey. And at the end of the day, you don't have a choice. Do you understand? So what do you think Africans need to do to revert this situation? To be Africans, to be united, mm -hmm. to be there for each other, to look at your brother like yourself, like... And to, to be truthful to themselves, you know, speak the truth and do not be selfish. Okay, let's build each other. Let's be one, let's be your brother's keeper. Like you hear this word, be your brother. Let's be your, let's be our brother's keeper. Why can't we, if not of opening our own businesses, because you know, you, you, you know, say when we say, as they usually say, when the white men came to Africa, what they did first is separation. They set separation amongst us. When they corrupt and separate us, they can easily control us. But we Africans here are already separated for some reason. So, yeah. Imagine four Africans are working in one company regardless where they come from, right? But they are sub-Saharan Africans. But they are very united. You cannot break or go through the bone. But if you see... Africans. If you see Valino not talking to John and Emeka not talking to Nandi, how you go? <laughs> you, of course, now you go corrupt in Nandi beside. Get take Valley go for that side. But if these four are one, you cannot break it. So that's one of the reasons, one of the problems we have. All right. So right now, I want you to tell me. Uh, I want you to name three. African countries that believe or thinks that they are not African. Three African countries that, that believe or think or feel like that they are not part of Africans. <laughs> nah, 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 they really drag me where, where, have you? <laughs> See, they know themselves and uh, like before going that you really know that when anyone here Africa, what, what comes to your mind first is black color. Yeah? So yeah, there are some people in Africa, in the African continent, that are not black. Who? <laughs> now, Who are they? They know now. Uh, bro, tell me now. They, these people, they know themselves like, you know, and they actually, they can say we are Africans. But not in all instances. In some instances, they will identify themselves as 
the country where they come from, not the continent where they come from. Right. But yes, this is this is the issue. There are so many people, there are so many Africans who identify themselves based on the country where they come from and not the country where the where the continent where they come from. Meaning like that. Okay. <laughs> right, all right. Okay, now I want you to this is a general question that everybody has in mind. Now, let me be very plain. Mm. Do you think Nigeria is the problem of Africans in UAE? Let me put it like that. No. No. But and I heard a lot of people, a lot of many Ugandans will come online and say Nigeria is the problem. Cameroonian will come and say Nigeria is the problem. So now for you mm. personally, you say Nigeria is not the problem. So what do you think is the problem? I think it's all Africans because, uh, like I said, some Nigeria is, is yeah, is sub-Saharan, we're black. Okay? Nigeria has been in mainstream media for a lot of negative negativities. Which Nigeria are you again? Cameroon. Cameroon. Right. Okay, continue. <laughs> ah, so <laughs> according to you, now nah, 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 question nah, I don't answer. But which is true, let's say a, a lot Nigeria must see so many people when you they're here in Nigeria, the the first thing that comes to their mind is crime. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So this guy will do this, this guy will do this, this guy will do this. But there are other people that are that have beautiful hearts in Nigeria. All right. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you have this experience with a Nigerian or what you heard about a Nigeria or Nigeria for the first time is something bad does not mean that all Nigerians are bad or that Nigeria is a bad place. So if you ask me again, do you think Nigerians are the problem of some of the, uh, the cause of some of the issues that Africans are facing here in the UAE? I would still say no. Are they part of it? Yes. Is Cameroon part of it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, what is your the main uh, challenging when setting up uh, this establishment? Because the problem there is that why we are doing this is also to encourage Africans in UAE that they can be a business owner understand awesome. you can be a business owner in uae all you need to do is follow the right process Correct. all right Correct. so i want you to tell us your basic challenges while setting up this establishment this uh afri farm afri farm uh, full stop yeah <laughs> i would say it's uh top of the list will be information right it was not easy for me to get uh, the proper information, uh, uh, the requirements. What do you need to obtain a license? What do you need to get uh, the location? What are the regulations involved in, in this? What are the standards you will maintain from food control to, to normal commercial? Um, so, information. Information. Yeah. So now, uh, do you think right now, is going to be more easier mm -hmm. right now for Africans to set up a business like this. It might not be a food store. It can be a barbecue saloon. It can be a, you know, laundering. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of little, little business that, you know, small, small Africans can do in this country. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's going to be easy out there for people out there that are willing yeah. or has the, the 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 quality of setting up their own personal business, do you think it could be easy for them getting the right information which you might give them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, if you are listening, then yes, information is one of those difficult uh those difficult things or aspects that you would have in setting up a new something. Yeah, like Emilio said, it could be a bacala, it could be a laundry, etc. Just name it. But now, and again, before I actually, I, I visited so many, there is there is a Barbie studio somewhere here, because I wanted to start from Barbie studio. There is a Barbie studio somewhere here owned by an African. 
I went there um, and I was not able to meet with the proprietor. So the staff did not, he don't know how and he don't know anything. I actually called the proprietor on the phone, fixed a meeting with him. He never showed up. These are one of which I explained to him. So he looked at me. This is another point we can always talk about, you know, what is very important. When I spoke to this gentleman, and I see half his number, and I told him, this is what I want to do. What I perceive behind his mind is like, this is a competitor. This is someone who will compete with me. All right. And I, I never get to meet this guy. And he's an African. He's an African. I never get to meet Which him. nationality? <laughs> Tell me. It's a ninja. Ninja? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. He says, I, I'm at work. I'm at work. And all right. Apart from Ninja, I traveled to Dubai. I traveled to Dubai three times, three times to have a meeting with a Cameroonian, and it was not easy for me to meet. He also showed up. Okay? Simply because I explained to him as well that this is. I want to open the shop. Yes. And you are not even in Dubai. No. But it was not easy. Surprisingly, now when you talk about Ninja, Ninja, there is a lady, Ninja. I call on the phone. Someone gave me a number. I call on the phone. I said, ma'am, this is uh, Valentine. And I introduced myself. I want to do something like this. She said, she sent me her shop location. I went there and met her. And she's been very supportive. She's in this Abu Dhabi or Dubai? Dubai. Nigeria. Nigeria. See my two, see experiences in Nigeria. So now, in your two experiences, <laughs> you met two Nigerians to seek for information mm -hmm. and one Cameroonian. Mm -hmm. But at long run, one Nigerian helped you. So you seek for information from three people, but one helped you. Oh, okay. See? See? So, again, going back to is Nigeria a problem? Is Cameroon a problem? No. It's, this is personal stuff. It's like this person is this person. And when you, being brainwashed by media, you heard that Nigerians are this, Nigerians are this, and you carry on that Nigerians are this, I think you'll be misleading yourself. No, but we cannot also change the fact that uh, Nigerians are causing quite an issue in this country. We are not trying to change that. What we are trying to do is pass a positive, like, it's clear, all right? You don't need, you don't need Emilio and myself to sit right here and tell you this is what is going on. You know, you already have. But we want, we want to do is to change the perspective. You know, like to give you the positive side of it, because this is what is killing us. We are so much drained in hacking to negativity that it's not taking us anywhere. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, in case you're still wondering who is here, my name is Chris Emilio, number one in UAE. Mm -hmm. And I'm here with Afri Farm Restaurant, the CEO, the founder of Afri Farm. And his name is Valentine Jodzven. Valentine George Jodzven. 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 So he's not pleased, man. This is Jodzven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Jodzven. All right. Valentine. So, guys, please, if you are in Abu Dhabi and you want to buy African food, kindly patronize our brother. Mm. Is not it does not take you anything. You understand? It can if it can even deliver to you. Do you understand? So call the number on your screen or you can follow him on TikTok. Just type Afri, Afri Farm, Farm yeah. on TikTok, which the name will be displayed in that screen. So contact them. You understand? They can be giving you food stuff every if you are the type that like African food every time. Come and patronize your brother. It does not take you anything. Let's support our own. Let our own grow. It it will not be bad if you see a, a supermarket one day in Abu Dhabi, a big supermarket or hyper supermarket, and you say that this is for African. You know, this is for us. Do you understand? It's not just no, no, just leave this thing for Indians. My we can do it. Too. My God, to <laughs> more live me India and just the wrong things anyhow. I had to go buy some more. I did, yeah, if you buy some more, but I had to go buy swallow from from India. What do you know about swallow? You see, I had to go buy a bar from 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 me buy and yam. The worst part, they are using us for business. Yeah, an African man is the one supplying what them. they are selling. Yes. So what stop you from 
selling that <laughs> thing, opening a business. What is there? Just license and uh, shop. That's, that's Just cool. license and shop. And and see, when Chris talk about this license thing, a lot of people have been traumatized with this license. Brother, license is very easy. Again, again, this is Afri Farm is way open. Walk in through the door if you need license for anything. I have an agent that will walk you through it and you get your license for anything. You hear? Easy. You license easy. is easy. Easy. As, you as long as you are determined to do your thing, to get the license will not be a problem. Okay. They will now give the money and collect your license. Have you? As sharp as that. You understand? Okay. So that is it for today. My name is Chris Emilio, and uh, I don't know if you have any personal message for Africans right now in mm. UAE. And uh, See, Africa, again, um, I am so much into Sub-Saharan Africa, okay? So, yes, let's just be Africans. Let's just be us, man. Support each other. Show each other the road, because together we stand, the stronger we will be. My next joy is to have an African person, an African, regardless from where, have the same shop so that me you have me we have variety, you know. Be the next African farm or Afri farm. Be the next Afri farm. Get your own name. So now I want to ask you one question now. Like I said before, our image is gone. Our image is is almost like it's dead. Do you understand? Our image don't. Do you understand? Yeah. So. Now, I want you to tell Africans what they have to do to liberate this image. Because, look, you cannot be just thinking that it's all about you. No, it's not all about you. It's all about us. us. Do you understand? So, what can you tell Africans what they should do to change this narrative of us out there? Live an exemplary life that you are really proud of. That someone else will look at you and said, "I want to be like Chris Miller." Live a life because something we need to understand is we are ambassadors of everything that we do. That you sit here right now, Chris, and or that I'm talking to you right now. There is someone who aspires to be like Valentine, and there is someone who aspires to be like you, listening to us now. Now, live a life that someone will. You know, we envy you that be truthful to yourself. Okay? Live life that would not affect that would not negatively affect someone else because of what you did. Let's just let's just do the right thing. Because that's that's what pays. That is what we can always survive for. Live a life that someone would not suffer because of something you did. All right. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, like you all know, my name is Chris Amelo, and we have come to the end of this particular show. To tell you guys, this program is designed to uh, put out the image of, or to repair, or to change the bad narrative that is out there for Africans. We are, we have Africans who are doing business. We have Africans who had, who are experts in different sector. We have experts who manage companies. We yeah. have a We have, we have Africans who do, who earn big. What is what is fifty thousand dirham? <laughs> what is fifty thousand dirham? Do you understand? So, but the problem is this. Let me, let me, let me come to this. Africans, I think for me, and I'm going to say this, then you put your own opinion. Mm. I think each time African man is doing well, each time an African man is doing well, mm. he becomes so proud that he thinks that other Africans are trash. Yeah, nothing. It's, it's, Th that's it's, true. We have pride. African has pride and some negative pride. Because there are so many prides we have out there. But Africans have negative, pro negative pride in greediness. I think I put greed over pride. Greed in the sense that now I have Africa. I don't want to see another Africa. Come on. And I want to remain the number one and only. Excuse me? Like I said, I challenge you out there. I want you to be the next Africa. <laughs> that is another problem for Africans in UAE. So, guys. 
if you are watching us right now, I want you to send this message, not be from my mouth. Uh, those ones that are, you are doing well, you have a company, you have an establishment, or probably you have a good job, you have a good career, and then you are seeing yourself as you yeah. have made it and mm -hmm. other people are trash. I want you to send them a message. See, it's nothing. And um, like I said earlier, have you been following from the beginning? You said, I've been here for 10 years and more. This is not my job. I have uh, personal personal stuff. Man, material and money is just a number and time. Okay? So, yeah, what is important is you and I, people sitting here, and what you will remember is not the figure you had yesterday. It's how many people you built have a surprising figure, people you built have surprising figure in their hands. That's what stays. Because when that figure goes, if you stick on figure, when the figure goes, you will not remember. But when you build people to remember, it stays. All right. Motivational speech. <laughs> Me, I didn't like motivation, but <laughs> he said, will, if you build people to to have figure in their to hand, have figure, uh, they will stay. They will stay. Oh, but if you build only figure, figure one, figure it, it come figure. up, it come up from ten, go for nine. Uh, it come up from nine, go to eight. You know, if I come today, I don't go see ten, now eight I see. But if you build someone to have eight, you go just say, Oga, Oga, Oga. That's why they grow. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let me money. <laughs> So, guys, we come to the end of this show. And my personal message to every Africans out there, and my message is going straight to Nigerians. I know even the, to Nigerians. <laughs> if you are doing well, and to be funny enough, because the reason why I'm focusing on Nigeria is because it's only Nigeria that I'm encountering. Mm. And they're doing all this nonsense stuff. Now, the person will rent a car, rented car. Mm -hmm. Because me, I've rented car, so if I see rented car plate number, you know. I will know. Yes. So, you will have, have a rented car, and you, you, you will know. <laughs> will I, 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 <laughs> like, you will rent a car, then you will meet your fellow African, come on to greet, it become a problem. <laughs> no problem. Um, we are coming for ladies, but for today, uh. we are done for today. <laughs> but for ladies, we are refreshing. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Amilo, and here we bring you everything that has to do with Dubai United Arab Emirates with the jobs and employment. But hold on. Today, we we'll believe in setting uh, or putting out a new narrative of Africans in UAE. Yeah. So if you are doing well, if you have an establishment, if you are an expert of something and you feel like you have something to say, reach out to me on Inbox, mm. Instagram. I know the if you send message for TikTok, the only person who I follow go feel repair. Or person who I don't send message. So mm. but on Instagram, you send me a message or personally reach out to me. But my WhatsApp is basically business. If you are sending me a message and tell me hi, how are you? I no go respond. So but go <laughs> straight to the point and tell me what you need. I'm going to respond to you. So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Amilo, and here is the end of this show. Do you have any other thing to say? Introduce yourself again. My name's again, Lenteng Valentine Jodzovan. I hail from the continent of Cameroon, particularly or precisely from Northwest region. So, T O N S N S O. And this is AfriFarm, yeah? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am at AfriFarm Food Stuff. So, guys, come and support your brother if you are anywhere in Ampatapi. If you want to call me, come in the right, I will send you the address. But the number is at the screen there. The name is at the screen there. You can follow them on TikTok. Yep. Peace and remain blessed.